One of my earliest reviews was of Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I liked it a lot. The controls were great, and the story of the game took cues from modern cyberpunk and, the tr and transhumanist fiction, creating a narrative that pointed out the issues intrinsic to the transition to a transhumanist future, that you would end up in a, with a period where those with more wealth and privilege would be able to, for lack of a better term, transcend, to get cybernetic augmentations and enhancements that would let them get even further ahead in society, while the masses would not. And as a part of this, in order to get ahead in society, or even just for that matter, to stay where you are, you would have to be able to be augmented, and in order to be augmented, this would in turn mean not only paying for the surgery, but for paying, handling uh, anti-rejection for the augmentations that you received. In this case, the in the game, this was covered through anti-rejection drug that people would have to pay for, neuropazine. With the second game, Mankind Divided, we come closer to the events of the first Deus Ex, while still sticking with Adam Jensen's character and continuing with his character arc. The game is set a few years after the conclusion of Deus Ex Human Revolution, and the Augment incident, where millions of people with Augs were set on a rampage by a remote signal sent by satellite from the Panchea Project in the Arctic. Adam Jensen had stopped the signal and uncovered the person responsible, but this event became effectively Augment 9-11. People with augmentation became subject to social discrimination and prejudice, and several countries began engaging in de facto segregation of people with OGS. This leads to some of the issues with the game's marketing. The producers, at, or rather the marketing people in charge of, the of promoting the game, attempted to co-opt the Black Lives Matter campaign as part of the game's marketing. To be clear, Police brutality based on prejudice is a core part of the world that is established as part of the game. And in Human Revolution, particularly in the Heng Shua portions of the game, they made it clear that not all the people who were getting augmented are rich people who are doing this to get further ahead or to stay ahead. This isn't if you had augment if you got augmented, you weren't always doing this because of privilege. A lot of people were getting augmented to get construction jobs or Migrant labor is getting augmented, augment work done to do construction or social jobs to provide work for their families. As sex workers who are getting pressured into getting augmentations to, for the sake of their clients by their pimps, by their employers. This led to, employ, to a lower class who almost literally owed their soul to the company's store whether through having to pay for their augmentations, or having to pay for their neuropazine, or, for that matter, both. That said, it's still not a great look to leverage a social justice movement and turn it into part of an ad campaign. That, however, the people who have this bad look, to be clear, aren't the developers, and aren't the writers, and aren't the designers. They are people who were trying to do relevant social commentary the lens of science fiction in the context of a video game, and more power to them for doing that. I am, would like it if more works of science fiction or video games in general used their, well, position to engage in bits of social commentary, especially when we're getting to like AAA level titles. You're never going to get the same level of nuance of a more independent work or that sort of thing, but it's still something. The people with the bad look here are the marketing department, who tried to use a use the social commentary for sales as opposed to letting for the social commentary be as it is. Adam is working for the counter terrorist group Task Force Twenty Nine, which serves as something of a predecessor to UNATCO from the original Deus Ex. Unlike J. C. Denton, the protagonist of the original Deus Ex. On the other hand, Adam is already aware of the Illuminati and that something is up. While he was recruited for Task Force 29, he joined in order, in order to further his own investigation into the Illuminati and their goals, and who they are. Adam is doing this investigation as part of the Juggernaut Collective, a hacktivist group working against the Illuminati. However, Adam has been played once before, and he'd rather not get played again. So he's also trying to figure out the identity of Janus. Juggernaut's leader, so he doesn't find himself still working for the Illuminati. 
While Adam is investigating his employer, he's also investigating a terrorist attack in his new home of Prague. The view of the police is that the Augmented Rights Coalition is responsible for the attacks, and want to use this to bust into the local augmented ghetto, Golem City, and arrest everyone. And by arrest everyone, they mean kill everyone for resisting arrest. However, Adam suspects that something is up. Something possibly related to opponents that the organist that uh, Task Force 29 took on in the tutorial level's climax, heavily armed mercenaries in gold masks. As is the tradition of the series, you can approach your missions in the game through a variety of tactics, using hacking, non-lethal weapons, and stealth augmentations to get around the environments. A lot more of the encounters in the game also have options that you can talk your way through, with a couple of boss encounters having dialogue kill switches that you can obtain through exploring levels that allow you to circumvent combat entirely. One of these such quote-unquote kill switches is lethal, the other one is non-lethal. Early on in the game, you get the ability to access a whole new array of augments that let you completely change how you play the game, from improved body armor, to being able to shoot spikes, to a dash attack, to being able to remotely hack things in the environment. Initially, you have to juggle your existing augments with these new ones, with taking new augments forcing you to close off old ones. But partway through the game, with some subquests completed, you can get your entire skill tree completely unlocked without having to balance the new stuff and the old stuff. There are some weird changes in, to the implementation, though. In Human Revolution, eating and drinking would replenish your energy meter, though not as effectively as using bio cells. If you had a candy bar, your body would metabolize the sugars and stuff in the candy bar into energy to recharge your meter. In Mankind Divided, the only way to replenish your energy above your minimum level once you've spent some power is by expending biostels. Instead, your health gets restored by drinking booze or taking painkillers. I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. The game's scope is also reduced from Human Revolution. There, you had two major hubs to visit, Detroit and Hengshua, with a whole bunch of side missions outside of those. Here, you only have only one hub, Prague, with a bunch of side missions in that hub, unlocking in between major story quests. Now, in turn, those story missions will take you to more distant locations where you accomplish your objectives and progress the narrative, but once those are done, you get dropped right back into the city. I had fun with Mankind Divided, but the game's ending is a bit of a bit anticlimactic. Human Revolution's ending took the player to the ends of the Earth. It had a really profound moment of catharsis at the ending, with the player being given a significant choice at the end of the game. Here, not so much. We get a sadistic choice scenario, but with some simple play, skillful play, skillful play, I should mention that I was able to accomplish, you can choose both options. Now... While the game's status as an interqual means you're limited in what you can do to change the world, it would still have been nice for this game to have an additional choice that gives you some impact, like Deus Ex, Invisible War, and Human Revolution, as opposed to the sadistic choice scenario where your choices are A, B, or both. The game's ending cutscene and mid credit stinger do set up the events for a third game, but as things currently stand with Square Enix and the Deus Ex brand, it's not clear if Square's up to finishing the trilogy that they started. Still, Mankind Divided is a good game and an excellent addition to the series, and I do hope that the team who created it has the opportunity to revisit the Deus Ex universe in the future. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. If there's something in particular you'd like to see me cover or just want to get your name in the credits or otherwise help the show, please support my Patreon. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.